Hi, I'm Dave. This is the Cider Baby Pod. I'm speaking to Lawrence of Grand Slam. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Not so bad, yourself? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, beautiful and sunny here in Spain, where I live, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's lovely here. Cool. Um, well, first off, we ought to welcome a new member to the Grand Slam team, Rocky. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have Rocky on board. Um, Rocky's been a, a good friend and a compatriot in a, a couple of uh, projects I've had previously. You know, with his whole persona and his playing and his singing is going to be a massive bonus to us uh, on the live shows, especially. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. And he's he's very vibed up about it. So uh, I can't wait till we actually get to the point where we start playing, you know, live, as it were. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm really happy. Very happy. So you've got some live dates scheduled for the autumn in the UK? Well... The live dates are not confirmed at the moment because we're just about to announce a, a big tour in 2022. Oh, right. Um, most of our festivals and most of our uh, touring um, commitments that have been sort of in the bag really since 2019, um, which obviously got cancelled due to the pandemic, um have all been rescheduled for 2022 so things like the rory gallagher festival the bash with philo um the golden age festivals all-star festivals sweden rock all those things all the festivals main festivals that we'd be doing have all been put back to 2022 so um we are at the moment looking at the october uh shows but until we get what I think it's the fifth, I think there's going to be an announcement from the band that we're touring with, which we're obviously going to put our own announcement out yeah. as well. Um, and then we can make it clear what we're going to do in October. And uh, essentially, if those dates we announce now sell out, then we'll be announcing dates in October from that point on it's a sort of a condition of how things are at the moment so okay cool um so stepping back a bit why did you reignite grand slam what what was the reasoning behind that <clears throat> well i've always had it in the back of my mind to record the songs properly um i got a little bit uh, upset at that there is some horrible demos out there which is sort of third generation stuff that was off of um, <coughs> excuse me off of cassette tapes and various mixes where phil and i were in the studio and we'd overdub stuff like 29 times and it would be a writing process and not really anything that should be heard outside that arena yeah. um and unfortunately due to phil dying and people raiding the studio and grabbing some of these tapes um i wasn't really happy about them being represented, the songs being represented the way they were. So I've always had it in the back of my mind to initially really re-record the songs in the way that we put them together and the way we ended up playing them live mainly after sort of uh, going through a long writing process on them and, and um, creating the song in the way that we wanted them to be heard. <clears throat> so I, I didn't, I was never been a fan of any of the demos really that have been out there because um we did do some 48 track demos at the time which were great yeah. but uh nobody has got any copies of those recordings as far as i believe um i'm going through my stuff at the moment trying to find to see what i've got because i've got lots of cassettes and bits and pieces on on yeah. that and various other stuff but um but my main thing was that i wanted to have people hear these songs the way they should be um and really the band thing came from that rather than me going i'm going to put a band together and then go and do the album right. as it were mm -hmm. um i mean i was doing a couple of 3g guitar shows um with a guy from bad company and jeff whitehall and a couple of other guys uh so i put a band together then and i put two or three of the songs that I wrote with Grand Slam into the set 
that I was doing in the three G shows. Right. Um, and the second lot of shows I did, I, I actually had Benji on drums, I had Boise on bass, I had Mike singing for me, and I had Mark playing keys for me. It ended up that became the sort of embryo of the start of of the Grand Slam, the new Grand Slam. Um, and then when I, you know, I work in the film industry as well, uh, yeah. in between playing, um, and I decided to sort of semi-retire from that and get back into music and concentrate on doing that. And that's when I said, well, let's just let's put the band together, do the album, and see where it goes, you know. Um, but the album's been so well received, I can't, I can't uh, thank people enough for the comments and the feedback we're getting because, uh, you know, it's always been a, a den to go into when you do stuff that you, that's retro regarding there's no more Phil anymore, obviously, mm. and you know people are going to make comments. And it's a bit like when I was in UFO, people always make comments about Michael Schenker, you know. Right. Uh, you know, people, uh, sometimes they find it hard to embrace you moving on as it were um yeah. but really you know the other thing about the Grand Slam album was I did want to project those songs the way Phil and I wrote them in the first place for people that are Phil fans yeah as much as anything else because I think it's a crime that they did, wouldn't hear these songs in the way we probably would have done it if we'd made a, a, a an album um so you know, that was a big part of it. That was a big part of it. And obviously I waited 35 years, whatever it was to do it. Um, but in my in my professional career in film industry, I decided to take a long sabbatical and go back to music. Um, okay. uh, so it felt like the right time to do it. I mean, and I, you know, had the right time and the money and the availability to be able to make the album. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it's been a long time, but, you know, hopefully it's the right time. Yeah. Well, I certainly think so. I mean, Hit the Ground is a phenomenal album. I love it. Um, Thank you. Uh, to me, years ago, uh, Military Man was released with Gary Moore and Phil. Yeah. And um, that was one of my, and still is one of my favourite tracks. But to hear it now is just breathe a whole new breath of life into the into it and I, I just love it i saw you at ramblin man play it and i was just oh close to tears emotional it was it was yeah brilliant. yeah um so yeah I've with got that in mind yeah yeah uh, is there new material going to be coming forward yes or? yeah yeah there's there's lots of new material uh it all be it's all written in a similar vein i mean some of the songs that i've got i wrote um i mean for example um uh, Gone of the Days, for example, was written. <coughs> you know, I wrote that back in about 1989, I think. Right. Something like that. Um, I did it as a demo, uh, very much in a slightly different AOR genre. And then I've always wanted, you know, to do the song again um, properly. But uh, yeah, I mean, some of the songs are old and, I'm, and I've got a lot of new songs. I mean, uh, and Mike is coming over here actually to Spain to work with me on the album because I have uh, on the writing really more before that we start recording hmm. um, so yes we uh, we have loads of new material and I'm I might be digging up a couple of other little things that I, that I wrote with Phil and um, things that weren't really finished okay. that I might try and finish um, but yeah we've got we've got that in the bag really um, We've got a great record company in, my, <coughs> in Marshall Records who've been uh, supporting us all the way. Yep. And um, they have a new recording facility, um, a brand new state-of-the-art recording facility, which we're hoping to get into, you know, in August. In August, right. we're hopefully playing the Bash for Philo in Dublin, um, all being well with the COVID. Yeah. Yep. Then I'm going to try and make it back for the unveiling uh, of the statue in West Brom hmm. of Phil's, which is the next day. And then the next day we're playing um, Glasgow Rock Down with um, Jeff Tate and Romeo's daughter. Um, uh, so we've got little things going on, little pockets this year of stuff going on. And then we're doing a couple of festivals with FM in France and Belgium. So, you know, those, those things are, 
we're good. But yeah, we 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 it's just a matter of time. What we probably will do is actually do a couple of tracks to coincide with our touring in 2022 as yeah. a release. And it'd probably be a pre-release from of the album or you know, a taster of the album, as it were. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so that's that's where we are. Yeah, things are looking good. Twenty twenty two looks really good for us. Um, and uh, yeah, we watch this space. I can't say anything now until they announce it. Um, but I literally had an email about five minutes ago saying that I think they're going to announce it on the fifth or the eighth of June. I think it is. But uh, right. Okay. Well, Lawrence, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time, and it's been a pleasure. No, no worries. Yes, thank you very much. Take care. See you again. Take care.